I, I had a nine to five for a while before I dived right into entrepreneurship full time. It's essential because you get to understand structure. Mm -hmm. You get to, le as she said, you get to learn how to work with people and you see as you asked in the beginning, you see someone else's dream, you're part of that dream, you're building the dream, then you learn from how they're doing it and you get the good aspects and you criticize and you say you want to do this better for yourself. So yeah. taking a certain model and and morphing it into what works for you. So it's it helps. Not everyone has done it. Not everyone needs to do it. But I did it and it worked for me. I understood how the office setting is supposed to be standard. And as a business person, depending on the service or the product you have, you, you might have those offices as your clients. So understanding them helps you sell better to them. Okay, so Yaku, you said you were uh, doing a nine-to-five job before becoming an entrepreneur. So now that you're an entrepreneur, what are some of the benefits that you enjoy in the entrepreneurship uh, lifestyle that you didn't enjoy when you were doing your traditional nine-to-five job? Well, um, my, my entrepreneurship job right now, as you'd put it, I'm basically chasing my dreams. Every moment is for me and the people under me. There are some decisions that I make that are not so beneficial to me financially, but are more beneficial to the people that work with me. So intrinsic value and the happiness that we have over time is more. In, in, in a setting, a nine to five setting, if you're sad, you have no option but to be sad. If, if you're sad at nine o'clock, you can't leave the office. You're sad at four and you close five, you need to obey your boss and stay. But in our own setup, we, can, we have flexibility. I can decide to, to wake up 11 o'clock if I want. I just tell my assistant to do this and do that for me. So life moves, we need to move fast because we have goals we need to achieve. But there's that, there's that comfort of knowing that you are in control. It's scary as well, but when you get a hang of it, you know that you are a builder because you build dreams for yourself and for others as well. I okay. think it would be unfair to say that those who are doing 9 to 5 are not also builders. Yes. Oh, Yuchi, I'm sure you can tell us some more about the positives, the advantages of doing 9 to 5. Yes, because I actually um, want to disagree. I agree with you and also disagree with you because where you say you is like you're propelled to go by 9. If you're doing what you love, if you find fulfillment in your job, you want to jump out of the bed and be there because you have something to do. And yes, you said we, you develop people. As a career lady, I develop a lot of people too because you have people under you. You have people coming in to do industrial training. You have youth coppers. You also help them. You help them achieve their dream too. So for me, there's a lot of fulfillment in what I do, really. Mm -hmm. And in a nine to five job, the, the, the good things about nine to five job is you're developing yourself, one. Secondly, you have time for yourself. As an entrepreneur, you always have to be there. Yes, I know you build systems and sometimes your systems work for you. But sometimes you still have people sabotaging the system. So you see yourself, you have to be there almost all the time. But you're doing a nine to five job. You know you're there by nine, you leave by five. You have opportunities to take your leave. You could take a one month leave, you could travel, you have time for yourself. But as an entrepreneur, your whole life is in it. You're mm -hmm. just stuck in it. You know you have to make it work. You have to keep making it work. I agree. I think yeah. 9 to 5 ensures that you have a better work-life balance. I think Being so an entrepreneur your entire life, I don't know if it's just me because <laughs> I'm poor at balancing work and life. I'm always working. But my entire life is consumed by my work. So do you experience the same thing in your personal life? Just to, you know, um, based on what everybody said, I really think it's about what works for you as a person. Um, I think myself and my partner, this, the, this lifestyle of just having our own businesses and fostering our ideas and watching them grow and working, it's what works for us. We, we both had to have nine to five, e five experiences and I think it was just a, you know, it was, it was good experience but it wasn't really meant for us. I really can't see myself confined to a office space, you know, for a full day. I almost feel like it's, it's you're not utilizing you know yourself to your full potential um so there's a you know it's 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 an interesting uh a world that we find ourselves in because it gives us an opportunity to um uh, you know get people off the streets to provide jobs to um train to learn on the job as well because that is what it's been like for us yeah, yeah. and uh to 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 talk about a point she made 
Yes, definitely. I like your profession because it, it adds value to the society if you're doing your job well. But as, as a staff in a company, there's only so much you can do for the people you want to do something yeah. for. Because let's say there are 100 people in your organization. There are five departments. You are doing your part, but the other seven departments are not doing their part. So they are frustrating you. So even if you want to go far and beyond for the people who you are giving training, who are coming to your office, the resources they provide might be, sh by, might be short. You might not be able to do as much as you want to do. So, so the happiness you're getting from that will be restricted to what your boss believes is sufficient for you but yeah. in my setup i am the boss i get to decide that this doesn't work this works if something in my in my organization is not doing it the way i want it to be i change it up i switch it up if i decide that i want to change someone's life completely i want to increase your salary because you need more i i do it and it's my responsibility to make sure that the the finances add up to that so the the the, the amount and the volume and the the gravity of change i can effect is far more than yours be me being an employer and you being an employee yeah. i mean you just said that um you being an entrepreneur you are your own boss but some people might say that the market itself can be your boss. So, for example, your customers and maybe your investors. So, any product that you're putting out or a service, they're the ones that give you feedback kind of on the work. So, let's say in her office, her boss will give her feedback. So, your customers or like your investors can give you feedback in the same way a boss in a 95 job can. Well, um let me answer you this way okay let's say I sell I sell tea okay. for example and I sell I, I produce a million packs of tea a day and you are one of my consumers of tea if you don't like my tea <coughs> you can you can make a comment about my tea you can say the tea is bad I'll not come back again I'm not going to have it someone else would like the tea and say the tea is good as the producer I decide to to change the tea to either make it better for you or leave it the way the way it is mm. for the 50 percent that already like it as long as my numbers add up and my profit is being made there are some some products and services that are more that, that have a lot more interaction with customers one-on-one -on -one. in that case you can say yes the customers get to control you more but not at all levels of business the more you grow the less the, the more the gap between you and the consumers, the more power you have, the more you can change products. If, if you go to a shelf now in a supermarket and I own all the companies that produce all the tea there, you need tea, so you have to buy one of my tea. So at the end of the day, the, it all boils down to the level of business and the gap and the nature of business. Aisha, the reason I asked Elia about work-life balance is yeah. because a lot of people hear the term, I'm the boss. They see, it, you know, as something very attractive, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be my own boss. You know, so they're very excited about that. But they don't know the level of sacrifice the and slavery. hard work, <laughs> the <laughs> slavery <laughs> that, goes and you have to, yeah. that goes on behind the scene. So that's why I asked you about the work-life balance. Yeah. You've experienced the nine-to-five. You've experienced the life of an entrepreneur. Have you been able to strike that work-life balance being an entrepreneur? And we, which has been more difficult for you so far? I think it's, a, it's always going to be a work in progress. There's such a misconception behind being your own boss. Everybody legit thinks that, <laughs> it's you know, everything is just <laughs> <laughs> and we just stay in bed, you know, the money we just keep pouring in. But that is so not true. You're challenged on a daily basis. Um, sometimes you're hit with uh, unexpected issues and you just have to go straight into damage control. Um, sometimes people disappoint you. Sometimes you get feedback that you're not necessarily happy with and you immediately need to do something about it. So there's a lot of um, mental work that goes into owning your own business. And um, you have to you have to find a way to just balance it out because you do feel sometimes where you've worked a bit too much and you're becoming a bit dull and there has to be that balance okay make time for other things open up your mind read uh, expose yourself to other things that can grow your business and also just provide that contentment in your life it's so key um, yeah <laughs> all right so we went into the streets asked everyday Nigerians their thoughts and their reactions here's what they had to say that depends though um, for a well-paid 9-to-5 job, uh, it, it's good 
I, I, I prefer it as a startup so that I could use it to uh, mobilize some funds. But the ultimate thing for me is entrepreneurship because even a nine to five job is just enough to raise enough capital and start up something. I prefer being an entrepreneur. Um, I feel if I'm on my own, I'll make it better. How much will government work pay me? Maybe 40, 50, 60,000 after how many years of graduation? But if I'm on my own, I can source capital and the sky is my limit. It gives me freedom. I can go into so many things on my own business. Anything I can, my resources can carry. I, it's better for me than working for the government. Well, uh, I prefer being an entrepreneur. Yeah, like I'm on myself, but still on the low key. Well, um, the time you invest in government jobs, nine to five, if you take the amount of time and invest it in yourself and your business, in 5 to 10, 15 years, you might be seeing yourself making six figures or more and be able to actually liberate your family and the people around you. But government jobs, um, the pay might be good, but they'll tie you down and you won't have much that flexibility to do what you actually want to do in life. So, I prefer being an entrepreneur. Um, entrepreneurship would be the most ideal. You know, because um, usually entrepreneurship gives you the time for yourself. And then one other thing is um, it allows you to be innovative. Usually most of the 9 to 5 work routine, uh, they, they are usually, they are usually on, on routine like that. Uh, you have to just go between 9 to 5 and you really contribute anything to yourself. You really make any meaningful thing out of your life. But when it comes to the entrepreneurship style, you want to think, okay, yes, how do I develop? If, you, if you're into products, how do I develop the product? How do I sell it out? Not, not that somebody would have to outline a particular way for you to do your thing. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, you can actually even decide people's time. Uh, ordinarily, uh, the economy of Nigeria is supposed to be private driven now. If you watch, but the the lack of uh, conducive work environment, you understand, has hampered the the privatization. Like uh, we want to be a private entrepreneur, but the environment, the there's no conducive atmosphere, conducive environment for you for your businesses to to forge. Otherwise, that is why you see most people going for pay job. It's not that they are ordinary; they should uh, they cannot do a private job or an be an entrepreneur, but that's the, the way to go. Welcome back. Well, we also have some feedback from social media. We have Adebayo from Ilayo. I have a concern though. Some people are just not born being an entrepreneur. They prefer working for people and don't even see themselves starting a business. Does that mean they are enslaving themselves? Hashtag Weekend Show and Gene. Zaki Karis Asen, sorry if I butchered your name. My take on 9 to 5, it's now the age of the digital revolution. With that comes a new way to earn, which means anyone can escape the 9 to 5 working mentality. Interesting. David Ahen, thank you for this topic. I totally agree with Shehu. As an entrepreneur, you are your own boss because you get to set your schedule and working hours. You're deceiving people <laughs> by telling them the downside of no, this. I, I, Many people think they could just sleep in. <laughs> they think it's very easy. It's not like so that's that. That's why it's misconception. misconception. Then the very last tweet, whoa, this is an interesting discussion, I believe. You don't become an entrepreneur to change the world. You become an entrepreneur to solve someone else's problem. Ooh. Interesting. Uh -huh. Just quickly give me your feedback in 30 seconds, each and every single one of you. Okay. I'll get you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I still believe in the nine to five job because it's helped me develop myself. It gives me time for my children and gives me time for myself too. So I'll go for that any day. Um, I'll remain an entrepreneur for life because it's what I want to do. I see myself in the next 30 years having at least 2,000 people working under me. We need to take charge of our economy. Businesses build countries. So yeah. I want to be a country builder. Aisha. I would encourage people to take the road of entrepreneurship. It's fulfilling, it's empowering, and it's the road to changing the world and changing people's lives one person at a time. Aisha Shehu Ogechi, thank you so much for your thank time. You so thank you. We'll take a break right now, and Inkechi and I will be back right after this break with the political segment of the weekend show. Don't go anywhere.
feel your presence through the work that you do? We have attracted uh, almost 2 billion naira by the red cells. Which of the former elected officials in this room can sit down and account for the monies they've received? A Greek project that put unemployed graduates back to being self-employed? That is what I did with the people's money. The president has also currently approved new railway lines that he has asked us to go and look for loan. It is our generation that would pay for that. When you speak the truth, you die. The Association Symposium 2018 theme, Nigeria Rising, it's time. Establishing social accountability between electorate and leaders. We will remain united until we make Nigeria truly great. Venue, Congress Hall, Transcom, Hilton, Abuja. Date, 22nd November, 2018. Time, 10am to 2.30pm. Red carpet starts at 9am. Sponsors, One Campaign, INEC, Yali Network, British High Commission and Code.